Many thanks for choosing us. The Ghana Police Service says it has shot two suspects and arrested another in connection with last Friday's robbery at Caprice. The incident left a lady driver with gunshot wounds. Details on the status of the investigation are contained in the following statement right there on your screen. And it reads, two armed robbers shot dead, one arrested. The robbers engaged the police in a shootout at their hideout. And there is more. This is in connection with robbery attack at Caprice on Friday, December 9, 2022. A female victim was attacked, shot and robbed. Now, it says sustained police intelligence led the police to the robbery gang's hideout. A police officer sustained gunshot injury to, this to his tie and under medical care. The police assures the public that all the gang members will be arrested. And that's the statement coming from the Ghana Police Service. My colleague Richard Kwejonyaku was on the ground at the time the police made the arrest and also when the exchange of gunfire with suspects happened at Bujumburam and has filed this report. The shooting incident happened at Gomwa Bujumburam Lorry Station in the Gomwa East District of the Central Region. Police sources say the suspected robbers first opened fire on the police officers, which resulted in the gun battle. The suspected robbers are said to have links with the robbers that shot a foreigner at Caprice and took her money away last week. The police officers gunned down two of them and managed to seize the motorbike they used in the operation. Two of them unfortunately escaped, but the police say they are on a hand for them. An eyewitness spoke to Joy News. I didn't ever buy, and I said, Oh, Moody, a chrono, a theater nearby. This me if you and I may buy me better. We suspect they may have gone to rob somewhere and they wanted to pass with their booty. All we saw was that the robbers had started opening fire on the police. When they opened fire on the police, a bullet hit a police officer. It was then that the police also opened fire on them. Two of them died. We thank the police for rising up to the occasion. We want the police to arrest the two that are currently on the run so we could have our peace in this country. Meanwhile, some of the residents at Gumwa Budumburam have commended the Ghana Police Service for the hard work in dealing with situations of that nature. The body of the deceased have been sent to the morgue where the injured police officer is receiving attention at the hospital. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kujunyaku, Gumwa Budumbura. In Parliament, MP for Tamale Central, Ibrahim Matala Mohammed says government must immediately remove taxes on fuel for domestic airlines to reduce the crippling airfares. The legislator, who is a former deputy trade and industry minister, says it's ridiculous that a return air trip to Tamale is more than 3,000 cities arguing the poor are being priced out of that means of transportation. You know, if I'm going to Tamale now with my I need about 3,000 to fill the, the tank. The tank. And when you drive, 3, those, yes, cities. about 3,000 to fill the tank. So when you drive by it, you have to top up in Techiman. If you want to get to Tamil, you have to top up in Techiman. And if you are topping up in Techiman, the least you buy will be like 500 Ghana cities. So you need 3,500 in, 3,500 out. That's 7,000 7, cities. How many times do you go to your constituency? I go to my constituency every other week. So mm. now we decided that to go by air. And then by air now, you, you need not less than 3,000 return ticket in Tamil. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm told Kumasi now. Kumasi used to be like 400 yeah. return ticket, maximum 500. You are now talking about 2,000 something return ticket in Kumasi. It's just unacceptable. I think that the taxes that I impose on the fuel this airline use, the state could help people. 
the state is not just me, but many other people. The state, how much do we earn as a result of that? If the state could take that one out, or at least subsidize it, there won't be any justification for the airlines to increase their fares. And if the state subsidizes it, the flow, the traffic flow by the airlines would increase, and perhaps more people would want to invest in, and there will be competition. And mm. once there is competition, the cost of traveling would have come down. It's just completely unacceptable. Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent Kweku Asante joins us with more from Parliament. Kweku, uh, what is on the agenda of Parliament today after the controversial censure vote last week? Well, Hello, Kweku. of the various committees, as we speak, there are committees who are now meeting to firm up in terms of the budget that has now been uh, put before them. The committees are considering the estimates of the various MDAs, um, departments, agencies, ministries, and are going to look at it. This week, from now and Friday, a number of these ministries' budgets will have to be approved in terms of the allocations that have been made for them before Parliament goes on break next week, Tuesday. We have also have an, uh, a very explosive interview with the Minority Chief Webu Tukamubara for PM Express, where he has been speaking about the leadership of Speaker Bagben. He says that he thinks that the Speaker is becoming a tyrant and so a number of all those issues are happening in the House is expected to generate some responses, generate some controversies ahead of Parliament going on break next week. Kweku Asante is our Parliamentary Affairs Correspondent. We certainly will bring you more from Parliament in our subsequent bulletins. Now, the Ghana Union of Traders is asking members of the business community to consider adjusting prices of goods and services as the city gains marginal stability. The country's currency, which is ranked amongst the worst performing legal tender in the world, forced the traders to shut down their shops last month as part of moves to mount pressure on government to deal with the situation. In the last few days, the city appreciated against the US dollar and is now trading a little below 13 Ghana cities. Given this level of appreciation, Guta is lauding government for its efforts as it is asking members to also act accordingly by adjusting prices on the market. Dr. Joseph Obing is president of Guta. Um, according to the changes, the same way when the prices were going and uh, when the dollar was going up we went up with our prices is the same way that when the uh, the dollar comes down we also have to um, come down so it's the natural sequence of business and that's why we are appealing to our members um to make the necessary adjustment and make um, uh, also strike the necessary averages so some may have different kind of um, excuse me, because this one is um, relative to each um, importer because some might say that they imported their goods earlier, some uh, might say that. So we all have to extract the reasonable averages so that the impact will be felt uh, positively by the consuming public who have suffered a, a, a great deal for the past three months. And especially when Christmas is, is, is coming, we, we have we have to give this to the consuming public so that they can have the respite and also enjoy the Christmas festivities. So we are very grateful by the government effort uh, of um, stabilizing the currency, and we are, we even encourage government to sustain it so that uh, um, uh, businesses will thrive. Consuming public will also have the respite, and then uh, uh, we, we we envisage uh, a quicker and faster. Uh, uh, turn around of our economy. Mm. Mr. Obeng, I am particular about implementation because I recall actively when the dollar kept rising, you led campaigns to ensure that government act. Now we are seeing some gains. How are you going to ensure that the average woman on the market is actually reducing the price of the goods and services as president of the association? What are you going to be doing on the grounds? to ensure we see this yeah, reflect. It has, it, it has actually started showing. From last week, uh, I deal in uh, electrical products and the uh, cable rose up to, 1.5 cable rose up to um, 300 Ghana cities. Now it has come down to 2. Uh, 270. It has started showing, see the business that we do there and the competition that we have among ourselves. And then the fact that the uh, the exchange rate is the major indicator of our prices. When it comes down, 
you you cannot overprice yourself out of the competition that we have in there. And, uh, uh, and uh, of course, we have our uh, uh, consumers also to sell. If you do not have com uh, customers, you, you are not a business person. So every um, um, business will want to service um, his um, customer. And so um, um, this is a must do something. When the trend comes down, we, we adjust positively. You heard the Guta president, Dr. Joseph Obing. We are suffering. Do something now. That's the passionate appeal from the people of La Paz who want government to be proactive in turning around the worsening economy. For some of them, it appears government is not doing enough to resolve the economic challenges. Listen. for business. If you have a business, I support I say, I country Young boys, I have a bread. It's a ma, Sabi, Cronin, and Yama, as I start to my own. the best president say, I'm going to be here, because young boys start bra at the Cronin, and Yama. And a back country no more. A brand of dorsal, do a brand of dorsal. You say you twenty city, who to me the Diana Pa, Adre, Ghana, Madagana, Madagana, who is there, Padagana, Padagana, so they three more day. Because on Ukraine, I make an because Chesana Pa, Lori Fair. Now, wait, no, put me off. No, put me in concern, Bao, Oka, Umbabio, Dizzo, Obabisiano, Abba. They have me cry, they have me buy a drain, we do a test in the wood to me. Ghana, I can't say. Woman, you just see it. You just see it. Ghana, for me, just see it. Ghana, for me, just see it. Top, now buy a bread. Now I buy a bread. Moon, just see it. Docono, two city. And now, I say four city. Docono, one city. Oka, I say three city. Ya Pamu Cho. And you're a piano Oscar. Yeah, 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 for a comedy. Seven wire thing, and I'm on call for one more top broadra, Omakasa Casa Broadra no or society. Sanya, I'm a man, and also to make a face, Samano, as I'm not a for the Biato, Santia, Sagan, and paying for no, Omami, as I'm so, I'm on so, as I'm also. Now, my man, or your broadra, no, on to me, your broadra, no, one, and Yafun to Muntubi, as Cavun to Muntubi, since I was a broadra, I cocaine, or people are also top broadra. I see, brother, who price the channel, sir, brother, no, or Tono, why I say, who is I say, why I say. What can I say? Only a two seater and a two five fast. Hmm. What do you call? Not a whole brand new one. I'll tell my thing. It's just so my friend in a new car for now. Much of you are. You for now you are just happy or tired. Very well. We better see you now. So that car can you draw? And now so that car you sell. Then you are here. It's just so my friend. My way. My friend. Very well. So now you should drive for my. Now you see me scar. Now no, you are too much. I do my best now. I do my best. Driver, there are two petrol musa, you say I'm a ton piota. Piota, one bag, you're a ton of saying. They be a obia to the name. They be a obia to them. I'm dying, gun, I'm passing a day. Young boys, who are saying sorry, and I said, Dang. That's Ramua, Mucho, and Nibesha, why I have bread. Drivers for this piota for piota bag, Bako, say 12 city, 10 city. We want to go back to Bako, say, I would not 10 city with you. That's Ramumba, why I pay for. Yeah, size, size, size. We heard the people's voice. A lot of uh, Ghanaians lamenting over the economic hardship. Some say you need more than 20 cities to actually afford a meaningful breakfast these days. There are those who say they use all their earnings to uh, get medical attention because there's no money in the system so people are not buying. They also want the traders not to take advantage of the situation and escalate their prices. Let's do politics now. The Opposition National Democratic Congress will this weekend head to Congress to elect national executives. Key to watch is the position of national chairman with incumbent Samuel Ufuswampofo slugging it out with the party's general secretary Johnson, Asiedun Ketia and two others. There's however a new face to the race 
who is undoubtedly the youngest among them, former Deputy Works and Housing Minister Samuel Yao Eduse, who says the delegates must reject what he calls uh, the established force if it wants to win the next elections. From the political desk, this is Elton Bobe reporting. <laughs> Samuel Yawaduse comes on board as the youngest to contest the chairmanship of the party. But he says he's unfazed by the might of incumbent of Oswa Apofo and Johnson the Sierra Nketiah. The former Deputy Ashanti Regional Minister, as well as Works and Housing in the second term of former President Mohammed's administration, says the delegates must look beyond the established candidates because they are out of touch with the reality. They have been in the party for a longer time, so they are well established, you know, but their credentials have not evolved in recent times. Chairman of Usuampofo has led the party in different capacities for, into four elections. I mean, he had won one. And the general secretary has led that to four elections. He had won two and lost two. They have led the party to lose to two consecutive defeats. You understand? So I'm not saying they haven't done their best. They have done their best. But I think that the, uh, uh, um, when you are given the, 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 the the opportunity to serve and you are not able to deliver, you have to step aside for fresh ideas, for fresh energy, for new dimension in the leadership, for new direction in the leadership, in order for us to change the narrative, in order for us to get a better resource in the very near future. Member of the Bantama constituency in the Ashanti region, Samuel Yawaduse began his politics at the early stage of his life and has risen through the ranks and file of the party from the branch to the national level. The two-time parliamentary candidate for the NDC in the Bantama constituency also served as branch secretary, chairman, ward coordinator, and constituency executive member. He has also been a member of the party's communication department at the constituency regional and national levels. He said he has what it takes to mobilize the youth and floating voters for electoral victory in 2024. We could see the, 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 the youthful exuberance in me. I am the youngest amongst them. You know, in my, if my memory serves me right, I may be the youngest person to ever contest for this position. You understand? And I represent a kind of dynamism in the leadership of the party. The dynamism that, that we haven't seen for a while, I, I think so. That is what makes me stand out amongst these these men that I'm contesting for the position with. So, um, and is this a purposeful young man from a certain region, uh, about 47 constituencies, region with the largest or uh, highest number of constituencies. And I mean, this representation will go a long way to help our aim or our purpose of securing 30% or more in Ashanti region. The biochemist was also holds an MBA in finance and economics from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, as well as an LLB from the University of London, said training of party agents, as well as the rolling out of a robust election collation system will be his main priority if elected as national chairman. When it comes to the security, it's not only macho, it's not only um, this kind of, the security goes beyond that. If you are providing people at various police stations, it must be directly linked to the process. And for that matter, one aspect that we have failed to look at is the detail of security personnel to various police stations. I realize that most of them are not well trained. It's something that I proposed at IPAC at any level that we have, I, we have the strength to do, that we have to get time to train the, 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 the security personnel that we detail them, we send them to various police stations. Because if they are well trained and any party agent raise an issue, they will understand why the party agent is raising an issue. At times, most of these constituency executives may not even know their right, they may not know their right, they may not know what is insist on. So we have to make sure that they are provided with this adequate information, which under my chairmanship, I will ensure that all these things are provided. Elton Brobe for Joy News. The TUC is likely to reject government's proposed exchange program in relation to pensions funds. I'm taking you live to the TUC, uh, which is addressing the press currently. Our friends from the press, to present our position on the so-called domestic exchange program, which was launched by the Minister for Finance on 5th December 2022. Uh, we will also take the opportunity to state our position on some various IMF-inspired measures announced in the 2023 budget statement. I'll start with the Domestic Debt Exchange Program. According to the Minister for Finance, the Domestic Debt Operation, as they call it, 
involves an exchange for new Ghana bonds with coupons of a longer average maturity. Existing domestic bonds as of 1 December 2022 will be exchanged for a set of four new bonds maturing in 2027, 2029, 2032, and 2037. Somebody said the government is shifting economic stability to 2037. The annual coupon on all these, and I want you to listen to this, the annual coupon on all these new bonds will be set at 0% in 2023, 5% in 2024, and 10% from 2025 until maturity. We are talking about inflation of 40.4%, and you are fixing coupon rates at 0%, 5%, and 10%. You, you simply don't understand. And then they said the coupon payments will be semi annual, means every six months they will pay. So if your coupon rate is 5%, after six months, you know how much they will pay you 2.5%. The domestic debt exchange program will not affect individual bondholders, according to the minister. Immediately after the announcement, the TUC released a press statement. And let me summarize what is contained in the press statement. In that statement, we express grave concern about the exchange program because of the negative impact on workers' pensions. We also complain about the lack of prior engagement with labor, given that a substantial portion of workers' pension is invested in government bonds. And we took special notice of the statement by the minister that the debt exchange program is voluntary. And we promised our members that we would scrupulously analyze the propriety or otherwise of the participation of our pension funds in the debt exchange program. Then we assured the working people of Ghana that the TUC and our affiliate unions will do everything in our power as trade unions to ensure that workers are fully protected and that not even a peso of our pension funds is lost in the debt exchange program. And finally, <laughs> finally in the statement, we appeal to all workers and unions to remain calm as we work to protect our retirement funds. So on behalf of my colleagues, EC members, we would like to thank all of you, our affiliate unions and members across the 16 regions in this country for your patience. We appreciate that. <laughs> we have analyzed the debt exchange program. And after a thorough analysis of the program and a very extensive discussion among the leadership of TUC and our affiliates, we have seen some implications, and that is why we are here this afternoon. Our conclusion is very firm, and it is this, that the program would negatively affect pension funds of our members, and consequently, their retirement income security. Already pension is low. And we will have thought that our government would do everything to protect even the small pension that we have. Instead, they are introducing programs inspired by IMF to cut further pension income. And as we used to say, we no go sit down. Yes. Therefore, the Chase Union Congress and all its affiliate national unions have decided that 
pension funds of our members will not be part of the domestic debt exchange program. <laughs> Let me repeat that one. The TUC and all our athletes have decided, and this is a very firm decision, that the pension funds of our members will not be part of the domestic debt exchange program. Yes. So, earlier this morning, we have dispatched a letter to the Minister for Finance, and we are demanding that all pension funds invested in government bonds should be completely exempted from the domestic debt exchange program. We are also demanding in that letter that within one week from today, government should publicly announce that all pension funds, including SNIT, are exempted from the debt exchange program. Again, in the letter, we have said notice that if government fails to accede to our demand within one week, we will advise ourselves. I have copies of the letter here, and uh, we will give copies to the press. So in case uh, we forget, please remind us. We are going to give you copies, and immediately after the press conference, it will be available on our website. But the letter has been delivered, and I make sure those who took the letter signed. So comrades, on the debt exchange program, this is our position. It is simple and very clear. And if government refuses to exempt pension funds, including SNEX, we will advise ourselves. I am sure they understand that. And the red that we are in is enough demonstration that we are not joking. We are not bluffing. So on this note, I will now move to some of the issues we raised in the budget, uh, in the 2023 budget. Uh, that's quite a lot, so please exercise patience. In the budget, government announced various IMF-inspired measures to deal with the economic and financial crisis, some of which are clearly inappropriate and wrong. And they include the following. Number one, taxation. Government has announced increases in taxes starting from January 2023 in this current economic situation. I know what they touched VAT, which is indirect consumption tax, affects everybody equally, whether you are poor or you are rich. And the value added tax rate is projected to go by to go up by two percentage, two point five percentage points. I have to work percentage points. It's getting to about 14% increase. They have also increased the maximum personal income tax margin from 30% to 35%. Currently, if you earn 4,000 a month, you're already in the high bracket. And they are moving you to 35%, which leaves less money in your pocket for you and your family in these current economic conditions. And they are also saying that as if this is not enough, they are saying that if you transfer that small money to your mother in the village, they are removing the threshold. And these taxes will obviously hurt the poor. And workers who are on fixed incomes and who are on low incomes. And as usual, businesses will, will, will pass it on to us. So in our comments we, to, the, to the government, which we have sent to government already, we vehemently opposed these tax measures and challenged government to use other measures to mobilize revenue, including one, plugging the leakages in the tax system. And we know it, that there is so much going out on the, into the drain. We also advised that they should rather improve the tax efficiency because it costs too much to collect the taxes that we are collecting. And then we also advise that 
government should deal decisively with the severe infractions in the Auditor General's report. Before this, we know the figures. Every year, account, uh, Auditor General comes with figures uh, and amounts that did not go as they should. So we are taking this opportunity at this press conference to reiterate our demand for immediate and radical downsizing of government. Yeah. 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 We think that this is important. If you want Ghanaians to sacrifice, we should have a sign that our government is serious. And if government is serious, and they want us to be serious about this economy and this country, they should take the lead. And we expect the president to do that before the end of this year. We don't have that. So that's a press conference from the TUC uh, boss himself asking government to exempt pension funds, including SNIT, from the domestic debt exchange program. And it's also warning government that if after a week it doesn't act on their demands, they will advise themselves. They also have a problem with increasing taxes uh, from VAT. 12.5% to 15%, and also on the personal income tax levy, which has been increased to 35%. Let's take a break on Joy News today. When we return, we'll bring you more in business. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it's time to do business with me, Beverly Broom. The Design and Technology Institute, in partnership with Accent and Arts Limited, organized its maiden edition of the annual Open House and Industrial Innovation Business to Business event for its partners and stakeholders in Accra. The event saw winners of the Community Innovation Competition display machines for the agriculture and hospitality industry. There's more in the following report. Made up of four teams, winners of the Community Innovation Competition were tasked to identify problems within their locality and develop innovative solutions to improve the livelihoods of their people. With a seed capital of up to $25,000 each, the team developed products like the cocoa pod breaking machine, a granite separator machine, a seed planter machine and an adjustable barbecue grill machine. Participants shared more about their innovations with Joy Business. So the reason for coming up with this device is that we realize most of the grills out there are made with low-grade food materials and that there's stress involved when users are using it. So we came up with this machine which comes with an adjustable fire unit and also a double flipping stainless steel food grade mesh, which is hygienic for use. So this seed planter um, is used to plant maize, soya beans, granite and beans itself. So with this machine, we have a hopper that contains a selector inside. And some of the features that make the machine work is we have a rager that make a trench. After the trench has been made, we also have a, um, a tube where the seed passes through. And we have um, a, a, something that brings up the soil together and a roller behind it, which um, covers the soil. Currently here we have Haki Granite Treasure, which will help granite farmers thresh granite in time, faster and easier. Granite need immediate attention to have it home. If this is not done, within the shortest possible time. Some germinate, some pet and disease get in contact with some, some become rotten. Coming to DTI and the trainer again in DTI, I've been able to come out with an, a solution that I will go back to help my community. We know cocoa helps the country very much. And since 1879, Tetequashi brought in cocoa into the country. We've been using the same way and the same method of breaking the pot since he brought in the cocoa. So when we came to Design and Technology Institute and we were told to bring out solutions to societal problems, me coming from the cocoa farming community, with my other team member, we brought up this machine, the cocoa, the McFace cocoa. 
about Fupa. So with this cocoa pod breaker, it is able to break 1,500 cocoa pod within an hour and 30 minutes. It is easy to be moved around. It has low fuel consumption. It can be moved from one place to the other and it's easy to operate. Technical consultants for the DTI Innovation Hub, Paul Isiedu, passionately urge industry players to foster an atmosphere that would allow these young students work alongside international experts to develop local capacity. My hope is that um, the young people of this country are supported to do more with what they have learned and begin to solve problems on the ground, create an environment that is enabling for people to explore. Um, something I have observed, there are gaps in skills. And so sometimes we even import those skills. But I would suggest that industry should bring some of these young people who are being trained with the TVET programs in DTI and elsewhere to tag along the professionals who come from outside so that they learn those skills, so that we can locally have that manpower. The Maiden Open House event was in partnership with MasterCard Foundation and Young Africa Works. Now, the We Power Authority, in partnership with the University of Energy and Natural Resources and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, is coming out with a training model for engineering students on renewable energy. Renewable Energy Director at BPA, Wisdom Ahiataku Togobo, says the one says about one million euros proposed projects with funding support from the German Academic Development Service would help build students' capacity and practical knowledge. He spoke at the assessment tour of stakeholders' facility in Sunyani. Precious Semevo has more. Engineering students at the University of Energy and Natural Resources and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology require further training to better manage engineering facilities after school. And to achieve this, we Power Authority teamed up with the two institutions and submitted a proposal to the German Academic Development Service for support to build the capacity of students and lecturers on renewable energy. A team from DAD and the Technical University of Berlin have assessed facilities in Ghana, including the Regional Center for Renewable Energy and Environmental Sustainability World Bank project at UNE and we generation sites as the industrial site ahead of a training model. BPA's Renewable Energy Director, Wisdom Ahiataku Togobo, said the partnership would equip students and boost productivity. We power, uh, our business is to generate electricity and sell into the grid, and we generate electricity from renewable energy source. We don't use foreigners to run the plant for us. We use our own locally trained engineers. So this is why we think that if we're able to build that practicality, skills in them it becomes easier we don't have to employ engineers before we start training them but would have had already trained engineers who understand the field and will hit the ground running and we are looking forward to um, a funding support of about 1 million euros students lecturers and engineering staff from BPA will have the opportunity to visit Germany to see how these things are done Dean of the School of Energy, UNE, Professor Samuel Jemfi, said they are also exploring how students can create jobs in the renewable energy sector. All the students that come to do renewable energy engineering will be exposed to somehow this project. So they will all have this structure that we are going to put in place so that it will be part of their education. And not only that, we also want to put in entrepreneurship and innovations so that when they graduate, if they, they must not only look for employment, so that they will be able to employ themselves. We are also looking keenly into that, uh, because there's a lot of business in renewable energy, a lot of business in energy efficiency that I mean, students have, have to be exposed to. A member of the assessors, Stefan Wolf, emphasized their assistance in finding local solutions. BUI is a very important partner and BUI can also channel the interest of the industry in renewables into the curriculum approach, curriculum development, curriculum review. It's an important role for BUI and also what they are already doing here. We can share our experiences with you, like our companies or association are doing it, and then you have to find your own solution. And we are only for inspiring you, not for giving your solution from Germany to cope 
to copy it. Precious Seme for Joy Business, Sunyani. And that's all for business. We have more business on myjoyonline.com. My name is Beverly Broom. Next to sports. Thank you for joining us for the latest in the world of sports. My name is Abigail Sanasusu. We begin from the corridors of the Chan team who are preparing for the tournament in Nigeria. And head coach of the Black Galaxies, Anna Walker, wants to improve his side ahead of the tournament. Despite the win over Hard to Fuck over the weekend, the home base team beat the Phobians 2-1 in a friendly encounter ahead of the continental competition in Algeria next month. Coach Walker has identified some flaws in his team and hopes to rectify them before the Chan tournament begins. Chan is fast approaching. With about four weeks to the start of the competition, Coach Anna Walker and his Black Galaxies team know they must prepare adequately to face Africa's best home-based players. That called for a test against House of Folk, which proved to be quite a good one. The Phobians began the game on a blistering note and took the lead in the 36th minute after Aman Kwabefi tucked the ball home following a cross from Salifu Ibrahim. The Galaxies returned into the second half strongly and staged the comeback thanks to goals from Brighter J and Abagnes penalty. Captain of the side, Gladstone Awaku, underscores the importance of the encounter. It, it wasn't bad compared to uh, um, uh, both teams played very well and uh, it was a very good test for, for both teams, especially us, uh, because we have a competition ahead and uh, it was a very good game for us, very good exercise for us this afternoon. Though it's our first, uh, uh, should I say, competitive game for us and uh, it's, it's, it's not bad. So. Uh, I know um, we still have time to, to, to get ourselves uh, um, ready and all that. The Black Galaxies are drawn in Group C of the Chan, where they face defending champions Morocco, Sudan and Madagascar. Coach Anna Walker hopes to further improve his side before the continental competition. I have played very well and they were physical, which I think uh, I have to work on that because uh, the North Africans play uh, physical football and that is what I have seen this evening. So I need also to work on that. Besides, um, my scoring was also um, finding difficult in scoring, unlike when I get the Division 1, Senate Division 2s, I scored them 7, 3, 4, but this uh, match I've, had, I've seen that um, uh, my goal scoring is, 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 is difficult. We have to work on that also. And like I said, that's the more reason I called for this team, to see where the team falls short. And I have seen it. It's been four friendlies for the Black Galaxies, and they've won all. According to the head coach, Anna Walker, they played very well he wanted a tough opponent and he had it in house of folk today and because of that he has seen some loopholes in his team that he's going to rectify ahead of the tournament in algeria so we're hoping to see what will happen they we understand that they have a friendly on thursday as well at a cross sports stadium hoping that the team will rectify all their mistakes ahead of the tournament next month haruna mubarak for joy news from pram pram so after being edged out of the World Cup, Gary Southgate has said he will take his time before he makes a decision over his Well, that'll be all for sports. Thank you for doing the lesson. My name is Abigail Sanasusu. Good afternoon. Welcome to Showbiz here on Enjoy News. And now it was a weekend packed with lots of activities from Whiskey's Live. Uh, in concert to Sissy Chum's gold worship. Here is all you've missed. <laughs>
Let's begin with the drama at the Accra Sports Stadium. I mean, Whiskey's live concert. So long story short, Whiskey did not show up to perform at his whole event. Of course, fans were angry and many were very disappointed. First, the event's promoters came out with a release apologizing to fans and promising a refund to all who bought ticket. Then, it was Whiskey's love letter to Ghanaians apologizing for the mishap and promised an intimate show for fans. Don't forget, some of the musicians billed gave their best by way of performing except R2Bs and Ken Promise. Now, to another musician who actually showed up for his event at the Alliance Francaise, Wallace had his mother concert and entertained patrons with a play collaborating with the Cat Drama Group, which portrayed the current economic crisis in Ghana. Let's change the curriculum. Let's make them down. And we'll take our children to international schools. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or we'll fly them outside the country. That's more showbiz news in our subsequent bulletins. And also, when you log on to myjoinline.com, you find all the showbiz stories there. Good afternoon to you, Aisha. Definitely. There's more news on uh, uh, myjoinline.com when you log on to it. But the Whiskey show, yeah. I nearly went to that show. The, the back and forth and the drama and everything. It's amazing. Yeah. That's how we wrap up the bulletin. Enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,